Well, good day, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the next video. Guys, I want to just review uh, three three things I posted today, or I guess over the last two days, on my community page. Please check my community page. I do I do a lot of posts there all the time to kind of keep up with stuff stuff I've posted over the years. So I'm going to go over three things in this video that I've talked about many times in the past, and in some respects, I feel a little bit like a broken record. I've I've been talking about Amos eight. Um, Jesus casting the first stone on Tishri 22. This is stuff I've, I've sort of known over the years, and every year, you know, the fall comes around, and I realize, well, here we go, another fall. Now, I'll get into why I think it's Tishri 23 that Jesus cast the first stone. But this this fall is a special fall because it's exactly going on seven years past these two cows that were being born which practically nobody knows about but I think a lot of you folks do let's go ahead and look back let's go back I guess about six years where Jonathan Kahn speaks about these two cows suddenly the Associated Press not Christian not not prophecy they send forth an image to America and the image is of the cow with the number seven on its head that's the image that goes through the world. Now, just to set it up for those who don't, the, the, biblical, the biblical basis of this is this, that when God warned Egypt of the coming of seven years of famine, the changing of seven, seven again, Shemitah, seven years of abundance to seven years of famine, it's the Pharaoh who has the dream, and the dream is of the seven cows. And those cows, each cow represents a year. The first seven represents years of prosperity. The second seven, the sickly, or in Hebrew, the evil cows, represent the years of famine. So every cow, this is the bi first biblical symbol given in the Bible of the warning of economic famine, collapse, is that of a cow. Every cow represents a year. And so the key turning point is the cow number seven. That's the last year, of, not only that, that would represent the Shemitah, because it's the seventh year. And that's where we are right now. Sure, represents. But, it's the, but it also rep represents the turning point of from a prosperity to famine. Okay, so you've got that all there. And then, so, so what happens? Now the Associated Press sends this image to America of cow number seven, the biblical imagery that God warned Egypt about, now coming to America. And what date is it released to America? It's released on September 25th. The opening day of the seventh year, the very opening day of the Shemitah. The ah. symbol... Okay, so that's that cow was actually born on Elul 25, which is the day of creation. But the the newspaper articles and everybody, they, it was reported on September 25th. And so if you'll notice, that first cow was named Ben. And the the, the type of number it had was like a Roman numeral number. It was it wasn't it was like something you get from a typewriter. So then uh what happened was a little while later a farmer let me go to this part. There was a farmer this guy right here, he happened to be watching the uh, Jim Baker show and he said, I have a cow that uh was born and he went and checked his records and it was born on September twenty fifth and it was a red heifer um, which is a biblical cow that's used to cleanse the temple and so that that cow was born on that day um, Rosh Hashanah and it its head see here this guy talks it let me, let me go ahead and play it for a second was born on September 25th the same opening day of the Shemitah the opening of the seventh year same day not only is it enough to have a cow with the number seven, now there are two cows with the number seven, and both the same exact day. The and you have day. one that is almost like the, the uh, I was going to say wicked world, I don't want to say that. The so the point here is that the cows are, obviously they both have the seven written on their head. That's a God thing. You know, I've shared this with a lot of people, and some people just, they kind of just smug it off as like no big deal. But this to me, um, you know, when, I, when this came out back then, it was thinking, well, you know, when did the seven years begin? But it's obviously the seven years began, it would seem, um, in the fall of 2014. And we've had pretty good years. I know we've kind of complained about this, but we had record-breaking um, unemployment 
through this time with uh, the former president. We had crops. You can check the crops in the 2015, 2016, 2017 time frame um, in the Midwest from the farmers. It was the definitely the years of plenty. We've had record low unemployment. We've had um, the, the, the bank interest. People are buying big and big houses. So I know that we're complaining about this last year with this um, with this pandemic and all that stuff. We can see the evil, but it's going to really turn, if God is going to use and follow this pattern, it's going to really turn to the seven years of famine. So let's go ahead and look at my document. This is something you can share. I'll leave a link to the Jim Baker show. But basically, you know, these... Uh, Pharaoh had a dream of 14, I'm sorry, of seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. And of course, Joseph, uh, a man of God, was the one called in and he was able to um, interpret this dream. And here, there's the interpretation is right here, Genesis 41. You know, this is the stuff you learn when you go to Sunday school when you're a little kid. You know, you don't learn this when you're older. Um, so most people are probably not aware of this. But, you know, God does things the same way he did, you know, thousands of years ago. Um, so to me, these two cows do represent the seven years, seven good years, and then the seven bad years. And then what, what happened at the beginning of the seven bad years? Well, in the time of Joseph, it was seven years of famine. Famine came. And we were all, we're all waiting for, at least I've been waiting for, this Amos 8. Amos chapter 8 has never been fulfilled in times past. And I'm going to go over my document study I have for Amos 8. And when you get near the end of it, the Lord says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread, not, a, not for thirst of water, but of hearing for the words of the Lord. They, they shall wander from sea to sea. They shall wander from the Dead Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. No. What, what nation is known for this phrase, sea to sea you know from the pacific to the atlantic you hear that in these songs so this is the united states they shall wander from sea to sea from north to east they shall run to and fro to speak to seek the word of the lord but they shall not find it see when the events begin um and there's going to be raptures of the little ones people are going to be taken it's going to be huge events colorful lights in the sky all this stuff people are going to be just scouring their Bibles. They're going to be binge reading their Bibles to try to figure out what God's plans are. They're finally going to be interested in prophecy. Because right now, most Christians, prophecy is this this you know part of the Bible that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Even though most of the prophecy, the overwhelming majority, about 90% of it, has not been fulfilled in the Old Testament. And that prophecy is prehistory. It's not history. I heard the other day somebody def define the Old Testament prophecy as history. It no, it's it's prehistory. It's it's historical, but it hasn't happened yet. It's called prophecy. Only God can do that. So what we have here is we will know soon enough here in a few weeks um, at Rosh Hashanah. Now we can argue about the calendar, but at least um, when these cows were born, this cow here was born on September twenty. Fifth, this cow was born on Elul 25, the first day of creation, uh, a few days earlier, but it was released on September 25th. At least for this sign, God was using the calculated calendar um, of 2014. God was using the Hillel calculated calendar. We can go here, we can see that um, September 25th is Rosh Hashanah. And that's sort of the my little bit of a beef with an argument about what calendar to use. Okay, I think the Lord uses certain calendars to let people know in certain people groups. So it, it's it's one it, when someone says no, the calendar is this. It's this because of that or this. Well, we don't really know that. We we literally don't know what calendar the Lord's going to use uh, when He begins His end time events. I don't know. And for someone to say that they do know, that's like saying they know the date of the rapture. We don't really know, but we can tell at least with these two cows being born, he was using the Hillel, it's called, calculated Hebrew Jewish calendar. We can also know that on September in, in 2015, Natan, the little boy Natan, who was taken up into heaven with a near-death experience, he was taken up into heaven on September 28th, 2015, on Tishri 15. So for the little boy Natan, who, you know, Natan's calendar, um, you know, I'll just go to you guys have seen this. He 
he, he, this little boy here, if you've seen this video, he, the events that occurred for him followed the calculated calendar because he died and he had a ingathering experience, which makes sense, on September 28th, which was Tishri 15. So for Nathan, the Lord was using the calculated calendar. So, uh, you know, I get a little exasperated when I'm, when I, when I post something, I'm like, I, you know, I don't know what calendar the Lord's using. And then somebody has to say, well, this is the calendar. And I'm like, well, how do you know that's the calendar? And it's this circular argument thing. But anyway, I'm just, just bear with me a little bit. I've had to respond to so many calendar questions or not really calendar questions, but more so, you, you know, heated arguments about the calendar. Anyway, okay. Not wanting to start trouble about calendars, but it can get um, a little exasperating at times. So at least for the cows and Nathan, um, and you could say the cows were born in Egypt, right? Uh, America is the modern Egypt. He used the calculated calendar. Now, maybe maybe for 2014, the calculated calendar lined up with the other two or three calendars. I don't even know. I haven't even looked at Torah calendar to see how it went. But okay. So where we are right now, if I go to this, I mean, we're not far away from the fall of 2021. So let's go to the calendar. I hate to say this. Let's go to the calendar and look. And somebody might say, that's not the calendar the Lord's using. What? Okay. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But here we go. Because um, I happen to think we're in the month of Av right now, but I, I could be wrong. But on the calculated calendar that the Jews use today, today is August 12th. Right here, it is a little four. So, if the Lord decides to use the calculated calendar for these two cows, then the seven years of famine will begin. This is the part I think I want to really get across. The seven years of famine will begin in September 7th. September 7th. Now, September, what, what day is September 7th? Well, it happens to be the day after Labor Day. So that's the next thing I want to talk about, after Labor Day. So I was looking at my my um, my directory of Bible studies, and I got tons of things in here. And I was looking the, uh, earlier today, I guess, about how many times I have looked at Amos 8. And of course, it's not going to find it. Here it is. So I just want to show this for instance, just to give you guys a sense. So these right here, there's a bunch of five. This is how many times I've I've speculated on Amos 8 Thanksgiving, um, Labor Day, Memorial Day, July 4th. Um, but there is a, a few extra data points that we can pinpoint Amos 8 to this coming this coming Labor Day. So here I have a document. You guys can download this. Let me go ahead and go through it. So the prophet Amos, well, I title it, The Coming Day of Bitter Morning, Labor Day Weekend, uh, 2021, question mark. So real quick, we already know that the famine, the famine, Joseph's two dreams, the modern interpretation of these two cows, the famine would theoretically begin on September 7th, the day after Labor Day. And let's go back to my study on Amos 8. So the prophet Amos was sent to the northern tribes of Israel, led by the tribe of Ephraim, back in 70s, around 760 B.C. And this prophet Amos had words for, from the Lord, given to the northern kingdom of Israel, led by the tribe of Ephraim. These prophetic events from chapter 8 have no past historical record of fulfillment. There's no record of a day of darkness back then. There's no record of God gathering up first fruits. That never happened back then. So these events point to a time in the future where God's people in the modern era will be judged. So Amos was given a vision of a basket of ripened fruit. Okay, And I'll refer to that as first fruits. Then just after this vision that Amos had of this basket of fruit, then God's judgment fell upon the people of Israel. Not the people of Judah, but the people of Israel. That's the Christians of the modern era. The following ingredients, clues, point to the coming Labor Day weekend for 2021 for these events to begin. So, 
I've always thought that Amos 8, the Amos 8 event, there's there's some type of celebration going on from the people here who are that the Lord's speaking about. And that God says, your feasts. So I've always thought that this was not going to be a Leviticus 23 feast. So it wouldn't be one of the um, seven feasts that are in Leviticus 23. And the Labor Day celebration is surely not a Leviticus 23 feast. Okay, um, It says that the fruit that is gathered in a, in a basket is ripe. Well, at the end of the summer, that's when all the fruit's ripe. You get the peaches, the oranges, all sorts of things. Watermelons, cantaloupes, it all becomes ripe at the end of the summer, typically. Now, here in the United States, we grow fruit year-round in some of the arid environments. But, um, but typically where I live and the mid-Atlantic, the peaches become ripe. Um, the only good peaches that you can buy, like the size of softballs, they become ripe where I live in late August. Okay, um, It refers to it being a Sabbath, so it would be over a, a weekend, and Labor Day is a holiday weekend. And then this is the kicker. It refers to this as a new moon. Now this, this clue I've never been able to nail down, but it actually turns out that on September 6th, in the United States, that is the day where the new where the moon becomes new, literally new. So that we have literal fulfillment here on this fourth one. I've never really had that one before. That sort of tells me that this could be the real deal. Okay, so when you read Amos eight, you see that he has this basket of ripened, awakened fruit. Look up the Strong's seven zero one nine. It means Strong's seven zero one nine means to awaken. Okay, but it's also used for ripe fruit. So Amos has this vision of this ripened fruit in a basket, and it's 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 mentioned twice. Like it needs to be emphasized that the first fruits, the fruits that are ripe. You know, when the Lord says, "When I return to the earth, will I find faith?" Well, the little bit of folks here that have been faithful to Him, they've been gathered up allegorically in this basket. And in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, "Gather the first fruits in a basket." And then it goes on to say this. The prophet says, The Lord said this to me. The end has come to my people Israel. Okay, it's not the Jews. That's the house of Judah. I would say these are the lukewarm Christians. I will never pass again, pass them by again. The songs of the temple or the palace, that's what it said. I wrote palace in there, shall become wailings in that day. I think when this event occurs, whatever is going to occur, some type of judgment event, a 9-11 style false flag maybe, I don't know. The Russians have sleeper cells, I've heard. I don't know. I'm just speculating that this could cause there to be wailing in the White House with you know, people giving updates on what's going on. And there would be, of course, as the prophet says, so many dead bodies. And we learn about these dead bodies in Isaiah 5.25. It says, in Isaiah 5.25, when it says, um, when those who call evil good and good evil, according to the prophet Isaiah, from chapter 5 it says the bodies will be the corpses will be piled up in the streets he says they are thrown everywhere that sounds a little bit like a tsunami could be that hear this you who trample on the needy and bring poor of the land to an end saying when will this new moon be over like i said september 6th is literally new moon day you can see that here you go to here september 6th is the new moon for september Okay, and the Sabbath that we may offer wheat for sale that we may this goes to a description here of basically these these folks that are selling things um, and they're uh, cheating people. And then it says this: The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob. Now I've spoken about Jacob. Jacob has twelve tribes, twelve sons. That's Christians and Jews combined. So probably this nation that has you see about half of the population of the Jews in the world live in the United States. Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. They shall not the land tremble on this account. That's an earthquake. Tremble on this account. And everyone mourn who dwells in it. And all and all of it rise like the Nile. So you got the land rising, then you got maybe the water is rising like the like the Nile, not the Nile, but like the Nile. It'd be tossed about and sink again. You know, if the events occur out on the west coast where California falls into the ocean. And on that day, declares the Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. 
I've always speculated that this surprise darkness will be the Planet X surprise eclipse. I've spoken about it many times. If you search my YouTube channel for Planet X, you'll see this, especially eclipse. I have a video about this. Um, that there's some type of debris cloud that's going to just get in front of the sun and cause a surprise darkness. See, there was a surprise darkness the day that Jesus died on the cross. People kind of scoff at that. Even you know, maybe even Christians I've spoken this to, and they like, what do you mean darkness? I'm like, well, what happened the day that Jesus died? The whole earth went dark from noon to three. And we sort of have that same thing here. Now, this is not that event because when Jesus died on the cross, the people, Israel, they were still lost and, and there wasn't dead bodies piled up in the streets. So you have to take the whole chapter into account when you want to say that something was fulfilled. Um, back then. It says, I will turn your feast into mourning, your feast, not God's feast, and all your songs and lamentation. I will bring sackcloth to every waist and baldness on every head. Whenever you see sackcloth and baldness in the scriptures, you always see other references to, this is Micah 1.16, uh, Jeremiah 50, verse 45. When the little ones are taken, you see this reference to baldness on the head and sackcloth. It's like people shave their head in sorrow and they put on sackcloth. Same thing, you see, um, like I said, Micah chapter 1, verse 16, same thing. And I will make it like when you mourn for an only son at the end of a bitter day. You know, Isaiah 17 says, Yet the harvest will flee away on a day of grief and incurable pain. Well, Isaiah 17 occurs just after Damascus is destroyed. Maybe we could see World War III here get initiated rather quickly. Then it says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, but a, a famine, not a, or nor thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. Then they shall wander from sea to sea, from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seek the Lord, the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. And in that day, the lovely virgins, the young men, shall faint for the thirst of the word of God. And those who swear by the shameful idols of Samaria those shameful idols, those statues in D.C., who take oaths in the name of the God of Dan. This is difficult to kind of, to me, to interpret here, but some have thought that the, some have said that the Antichrist comes from the tribe of Dan, that the God of Dan would be Satan, or the Antichrist, and make vows in the name of God of Beersheba. They will fall down and never to rise again. Okay, so the interesting thing here is this famine we already have in another prophecy, another sign from the Lord, that the famine would begin on September 7th. And when we read Amos 8, completely disconnected prophetically, but here the Lord brings this, these events together, that this Amos 8 could finally be the fulfillment that I have speculated and all of these various iterations of when this Amos 8 could be fulfilled for real. Okay, I think, uh, let me see how long I went going here. It's 23 minutes. Okay, one other thing I want to go over with, and that is this short little study I have about Jesus casting the first stone. I've done videos on this before. This is just going to be a short overview. You guys can download all these documents. I'll have links to them. But when you read John chapter 7 and John chapter 8, John chapter 7 is an account of Jesus going up to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, let me just quickly show that to you here. The Feast of Tabernacles is Tishri 15 to 21, and then there's an eighth day added on. So on the calculated calendar, this is... September 21st to September 28th is the eighth day. And then in John chapter 8, the day after the great day, the text says the day after the great day, which is Tishri 22. They say down here they call it the great day. Yeah, the eighth day, um, Shimini Azaret, I really can't pronounce that, which is September 28th. Um, the Lord said, I'm sorry, the text says in John chapter 7, John chapter 8, rather, it goes like this. This is when they brought the woman to them who was caught in adultery. A harlot caught in adultery brought to Jesus by the accusers. Okay, So John 8 says this. So when they continued, the Pharisees asking him, Jesus lifted himself up 
And he said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now, I used to read this for years, and I finally got the understanding one day where Jesus is proclaiming he himself, because he is the only one without sin, according to Hebrews 4, that he'll be the first one to cast a stone at the mystery Babylon harlot. And we can see from Hebrews 4 that it says that Jesus, our high priest, is, is without sin. And when you read Isaiah 28, which is the beginning of the seals, in my opinion, it says, Woe to the proud crown, woe to the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim. That would be the leaders of this drunken nation, Ephraim, USA, and the fading flower of its glorious beauty. See, we've been fading for many years, which is at the head of the fertile valley, the fertile crescent, of those who are overcome with wine, which is nations a bunch of, it's just full of drunkards, especially down in D.C. Behold, the Lord has one who is strong and mighty, a mighty agent, and I think this might be the Lord himself, and he comes with this asteroid. He actually causes this asteroid. He throws it down to the earth with his hand, what it refers to and it says here later that this to understand this it will be sheer terror to understand this message of Isaiah 28 which again was never fulfilled in times past so with that you know I don't know what calendar we're using I'm just making the statement that I'm not saying it's going to happen on Tishri 23 but Jesus made the proclamation on Tishri 23. So with that, that could be a clue that we should we should consider. I think with that, guys, I'll let you go. Um, I do have something else I want to talk about here a little bit later on another video, and it has to do with this Bible study I've been working on. It has to do with um, the New Jerusalem and all of these, these foundation stones that have this different color, emerald, topaz, amethyst, and the fact that these 12 colors may have something to do, well, I know they have something to do, with the colorful lights in the sky that's considered one of the first events that's going to occur. With that, guys, I'll let you go. You guys can download all, the, download all these documents. With that, have a great day, and God bless you.